Mm -hmm. we'll call the meeting to order. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Jacobson. Resolve the agenda for the April 17th regular meeting. Council to receive discussion. All in favor? Carry. Okay. Motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Jacobson. Resolve that the minutes of the April 3rd, 2018 regular meeting council and the April 5th special meeting council be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Carry. What, us, what I would like us to do now is to take a couple of minutes and reflect on the tragedy that unfolded in Saskatchewan with the Humboldt Broncos. Uh, I had an opportunity to send a letter to Mayor Brad Mensch of the City of Humboldt to express our condolences and to tell him that our thoughts and prayers are the people of his community. And uh, I think we'll just stand and take a minute to think about uh, you know, the people that lost their lives in that tragedy. So one of the good things, if there is any positive thing at all that could come out of that event, I think that what it's done, it's shown that uh, in times of need and times of emergency, the Canadians right across the country can pull together for a common cause. And uh, again, we wish uh, our hearts and prayers are going with the people of Humboldt and anybody that's affected by this tragedy. And we're thinking of you. And also there is an event happening on Sunday at uh, 3 o'clock at the Centennial Arena where the community will have a chance to uh, pay tribute to uh, people that lost their lives in this and the people that assisted in dealing with that tragedy. Thank you. Okay, uh, correspondence. The first one is final bill 19. One of the things that was happening in bill 19 is that they were going to remove the requirement for uh, advertisements to be printed in local newspapers. That has changed. The government has dropped that procedure. So now we will continue a status quo where uh, hearings and things will continue to be advertised in, in the print media. The next one is from the Southern Chiefs organization uh, to Mayors and Reeves asking if we wanted to attend uh, the conference being held in Winnipeg. I am interested in going if Council would authorize it. What is it? Maybe it's a month. Also, this must have been added just recently, the uh, information on the Climate Action Engagement Invitation. There's some sessions coming up in different locations across Manitoba, uh, Brandon, Winnipeg, and Dauphin. Uh, some for Indigenous communities, some for the business and private sector, and some for uh, uh, municipalities and infrastructure or owners. I don't know if it gives us a date and time of the one in Gotham. I don't see anything there. Well, May the 1st, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Maybe pass a resolution for somebody to attend if they choose to attend that. Yeah, I don't mind going to that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, council meeting day. What's in the morning? We can still vote. Yeah. The next is a request from a red barn to put a, uh, they call them bouncers or whatever, on the street. I think what we need is some clarification from uh, infrastructure, Manitoba house at the hi highways on that particular. We're not opposed to it. I think there has been similar things done in the past, but I think we just need some clarification from uh, Manitoba infrastructure, if that's okay with council. Mm -hmm. Councillor Sackle. I don't know if I'm reading the letter, we didn't really put any sort of safeguards. You know, it's kind of looks like they want to have the bouncy house right on Main Street. And the only thing that concerns me is a, a, a an accident or uh, somebody actually running into this. You know, barricades aren't going to stop an automobile. 
uh, that doesn't see it, whether it be an accident or a, who knows what. I can't see the, in the sun or don't know that it's actually happening. So, I don't know. I, I guess if for me, I'd want to see the, the street blocked or some sort of safeguards like cement barricades or something at, in, so that it at least can try to stop a, a vehicle from coming through there. I know they have those structures that cement works, they sell them there, about a four foot, it's key rails or whatever they call it. Four foot uh, barrier or something around at least on either end so that... Do we have not a couple of them over at the ski port park? There are some on the north side of the property yeah. there, but I don't know who they yeah. belong to. I don't know they I'd like to, to see what he plans for, for uh, <coughs> safeguarding the people. That would be my concern. Okay. So that I think they're asking for more detailed information. Tell me have some safety concerns. I would suggest the whole block be blocked. Not just the corner by the house or by the street. get some resistance from other business people. Yeah. For how long does he want it? I don't think the MIT is going to agree to close all the Main Street for a block. No, I don't mean a block. Just one block. Mm -hmm. They have they have done it before when we've had special things, sidewalk sales, that sort of thing back in the primeval days. Speak for yourself. Okay, so you'll get some more information. We still have time. Yep. Okay. 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 Item five two, the Swan Valley stage players requesting we waive the hall rental and they were using the fundraising as a fundraiser for a sound system for the hall. Lighting. Lighting. Discussion? Councillor Councillor Julie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just asking for the round table rentals to be waived. So they have paid their hall fees. So it's just the extra rental fees for the round tables. Based on the fact that they donate a percentage of the profits back to the hall to the purchase of sound and or lights, I, I encourage us to look favorably at this. Councillor Mori. Uh, I concur with uh, Councillor White that uh, this is a fine example of a community organization looking to better the infrastructure of the facilities that are around here and uh, I fully support them in the endeavor and the request. There's a resolution, do we have, do I have it there? Oh, we have a um, backtrack here just a little bit. Okay, we have the resolution moved by Councillor Morial, seconded by Councillor Jacobson. There's all the town authorized Seabird Vera, Red Barn Limited to block off a portion of Main Street in front of 616 Main Street for the grand opening of Desk Kinderland on May. We didn't put a date in. Did we want to table that? Yeah, I suggest we probably table that one to okay. further information. Okay. The motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Morial, whereas the Swan Valley stage players raised money for the Veterans Community Hall sound and light system during the event held April 13th and 15th, 2018. Therefore, be it resolved that Tom waived the roundtable rental fee for the Swan Valley stage players for this event. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, I think councils probably saw the information that came out that the uh, Swan Valley Stampeders and the Chapel Program are uh, holding a Humboldt Broncos tribute on Sunday at 3 o'clock in the Centennial Arena. Uh, they're asking for the waiver of the fee for that event. Discussion? Councillor Sackle and Councillor White. Well, I think uh, the event looks like a, a great event. I think it'll be uh a nice community building event. I think that everybody can appreciate it and not be in favor of it. I agree that that would be a, a small donation in kind to that process. They've asked us to take part, so I'm willing to take part. I think we're all going. I think we should be good to all be there if we can. The motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Morio, resolve aware of the Swan Valley Stampeders and the Stampeders Chapel program are hosting the prayers for Humboldt Swan Valley Community Event on April 22nd at the Centena Arena. Be it resolved, the arena rental fees be waived for this event. All in favor? Sure. 
Item 5 3 are Centennial Arena lights. Councilor Jacobson, do you want to talk about that? I can. Uh, yesterday I actually had a chance to go down to the arena. Uh, Hugh had called me down that um, we have one part, I guess, to say that the, the lights that we have there right now for the uh, arena ice is, uh, or lighting for the arena ice is, is old and it's uh, hard to find replacements for. Uh, those fixtures and eventually they're going to have to be replaced. So um, replacing them generally, you replace them with LED lighting. So they actually had uh, one of the electricians come in and put one up temporarily to see what it looks like and, and uh, they're pretty bright and it will be bright in there but the bottom line is that we have to look at replacing them and we have an opportunity uh, at the same time uh, installing them at the cost that you'll see in the, in the resolution, that we'll also receive back about $10,000 from Mantle the Hydro. This rebate from Mantle the Hydro will not be available to us at the end of this year. It's kind of, it's uh, maybe discontinued or phased out or whatever you want to say, expiring. So at the end of the day, we can spend, I think it's around $26,000 and have them installed and updated uh, or leave them or take advantage of the rebate and that it has a cost of roughly about $16,000. Uh, I believe that Patty has already added that into the budget. No, she has not? Okay. It was in the budget at the beginning of the year, but it was one of the items that was taken off okay. when we were asked to reduce. So okay. it's $16,000 we would have to add So this is what the net will be with $16,000. So the bottom line is, is that if we don't, future costs will be roughly $26,000 or over that with no rebate uh, for us to tap into. And um, the fact is that it's harder and harder for them to find these bulbs. Most arenas across the province are already converted to these LED lighting already. So I guess that leaves us to make the decision if we want to upgrade our lights and replace the old ones. Councilor White. Just a, a different perspective. If the lights are working well and they're difficult to find, it costs us nothing. And over time, maybe we'll save spending the $16,000 by buying new light bulbs. Council Friesen. Which are harder and harder to find. I went to see Hugh also and we had a chat and he was yeah. telling me the same thing. That to get replacements, it's almost impossible to find them anymore, which is another reason to go <coughs> with the babies. I guess I have an issue with this being added back to the budget at this late stage in the game. Right. We've been working hard to get this budget down and it was presented at one time and deleted and now it's back. Yes. I don't remember it actually being deleted yeah. out, but I don't know if, if the rebate was actually put in there, so... Yeah, I don't think at that time it was maybe known. Like, this was in January, Patty said, that it was in, yeah. in the budget to replace all the lights, and then when the instruction came that we were to reduce, then she took it out. And, and I know, she, like she said, she, she showed the committee that it had been taken out, but I don't think at that time we knew about the Power Smart program. The Power Smart program is ending. Like, with the financial situation as Hydro's in, they're going to come with some other program in the future. I can't see that they would end. Councillor White. Regardless of what the council decides, uh, I would uh, hopefully we would put out a tender for that, a request for proposals, not just give it to one individual. Well, I believe that's what the way it would be done. Because right now it's saying it's both of them. Uh, what I actually like. I was, I was a little surprised to see the resolution tonight because it was something that we had, our, two of our committee members had had a chance to speak uh, to the arena staff and to see what it was. I didn't really know what the impact was at, to the budget, first of all, and, and exactly the, the full cost and the cost savings, what the cost savings might be when you replace all these units. Um, so I, I wouldn't be against you know, at least maybe tabling this for the committee at least to be able to see this and maybe uh, what the impact to the budget might be before we make a final decision on it. Councillor Sackman. Another thing I was going to say, possibly, maybe we you know keep it as top of mind and see how the budget is going towards the end of the year and if we have till the end of this year to make this make this uh, 
expenditure possibly you know we'll see how the budget is playing out for the rest of the season and maybe look at it towards fall the other thing that alarms me is we keep talking about the floor surface and you know uh, where do, where are we going with that and <coughs> what is the future of the centennial arena i hate to say that we're going to put sixteen thousand dollars into lighting and then find out and my understanding is that the floor was a higher priority than the lights well the the um well, you know what, my feelings about the light, I had mentioned already, but um, as far as the floor goes, we are talking about the consultant to come in and, and do a, an overview of what the issues are. I had to talk, a chance to talk to Hugh about that yesterday, and so we know that we have a serious problem with the floor, and that's not something that we're going to be looking at repairing this year. That's going to be something that's going to come down the pipe maybe in a year's time, that uh, potentially could be far more expensive repair than sixteen thousand dollars. Councillor Sackle and Councillor Memorial. Did he give you any sort of indication? Uh, you say the lights are getting harder to find. So when they buy the lights, did the manufacturer say we're gonna be building them for three more years, five more years? No, and the thing is when what does harder to find mean? Well and the thing is that was I, he must have misunderstood what I said because I asked for the information to be presented to the committee so that we can have a chance to look at it okay. to see what the cost savings were, what everything you know really meant as far as really replacing bulbs, ballasts, and, and so on. I, that I didn't know and I wanted to get that information, but obviously that was misunderstood to where we are right now. So like I said before, I would rather see this table for the committee to have a look at it and see the implications as far as costs, long savings, and so on, and what it would be to our budget. Councilor Morgan. Uh, I would agree with that statement uh, that uh, yeah. this should be tabled because uh, if this was already put in the budget and then pulled, now to me this is like a bait and switch where we're almost in the final stages of the budget and then now slipping it in through as a resolution after the fact, even though we're not completed the, the budget process. Um, and as Councillor Saka says, um, what is harder to, to find? Like, I agree it's prudent to switch to uh, energy efficient lighting for improvement stuff like that, and it's we need to get with the times. But under the financial constraint that we're under and stuff like that, and with other consult like with the consulting report that's being engaged in stuff like that, um, if we proceed with this um, through the budget process, if if uh, REC wants 16 or these lights back in there for $16,000, um, out of that budget, REC budget, $16,000 from somewhere else should be cut to stay within the, the number that they were, were given. Like, if they want it that bad, they'll cut something else that's not as a, as a priority. So. But I'm just a little, personally, I'm disappointed that we're not even through the budget process and this is trying to come in through, in my mind, a back door to, because it's, because this is a capital purchase, uh, so it should be on the capital plan or the capital future of, or five-year plan of that building. And we will agree. So yeah. We'll table it. Yeah, I, I totally agree, and, and, and it should never be here. So I apologize for uh, for that. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Jacobson, resolve at resolution 2018179 be tabled. All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Jacobson, resolve at resolution 2018-176 be tabled. Discussion? All in favor? The motion moved by Councillor Memorial, second by Councillor Jacobson, resolved that Lance Jacobson and Dwayne Knight be authorized to attend the Dauphin Grace consultations uh, in Dauphin, May 1st, 2018. Discussion? Councillor Sackler. I might want to join in on that one as well. The motion moved that Lance Jacobson, Dwayne Knight, and Jason Sackler be authorized to attend the Dauphin Grace consultation on May 1st in Dauphin. 
Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Parkland June District meeting. Do you want to talk about that, Julie? Um, I just received this information, and um, there's some requirements that uh, that we have here for the June District meeting, which is being held in our community hall on June the eighth. Um, there's on the. Uh, questions, the host questions, we have to decide whether we're going to charge a registration fee. Um, what has been the normal wondering. practice? Have you paid a registration fee for us, say when we went to the PAW? Yeah, it's, it's, some of them charge, some of them don't, um, but we have paid we registration paid. fees. up to you. Councilor Jacobson. So I think one of the last meetings that we talked about was um, sponsors, mm -hmm. right? So we put that out there for sponsors for this event, right? Yeah, we, uh, we'll be in charge of doing that, contacting people. Okay, and so then we look for what, like two or three sponsors and that usually is uh, who takes care of the, the, the meal or what are they paying for or what are they sponsoring? Um, I remember the last one that we had hosted. We got we got um, an organization to sponsor the coffee breaks, you know, the muffins and coffee and okay. tea. And I believe we also had a sponsor that paid for part of the lunch. Okay. But yeah, we we would uh, hire a caterer, but we would ask a sponsor to cover that cost or part of that cost. Okay. We might be able to find some sponsors. So the registration fee is to cover offsets and costs of the of any costs that we have to incur, whether it be lunch or hall rental, or hall rental, yeah, anything like that. We decided what we're going to do for lunch, or do we have to sit down as a committee and discuss this, or I think we we'll probably have to do that. that. Sit down and discuss. It. Councilor Moore. Um, Freshman Mayor, did you put anything in the budget for the hosting the district rec? Um, there, there is a little bit of money in um, what was the section in the budget? Convention, not um, um, uh, receptions and yes, yeah. There will be a little bit there, but but there won't be very much because we always budget a little bit for public receptions, yeah. you know. Um, but there, but there won't be a whole lot. So it would be a good idea if we could get as much sponsorship as possible. Councilor White. So the registration fee that our guests pay doesn't pay for the expenses? That's what we go towards. It depends on what that rate or that fee is going to be. So we have to determine how much this or anything is going to cost. It's getting a little late to tell it, but they know already what their fee is to, to register. We set the fee. We, set the we fee. have to decide. I have to send this in to them by May 14th. So, so that they, they can. Prime River could charge all hundred bucks, which it makes some money. Put it towards our budget. No, they stated in their letter that standard is ten to fifteen. It's going to say. <laughs> 10 yeah. Anyway, we'll, committee will. We'll have to get together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, Superintendent Works Report. Any questions to Darren? Superintendent so Works Report. <clears throat> There's the Sixth Avenue lift station that says commissioning April 26. Is that where it's completed or? Uh, yeah, that's substantial completion. So they'll do the uh, programming at, uh, at that point. <coughs> Everything will be tested and uh, running, and then that's our point for warranty. So they've been back here with the electric and whatever that delay was, that's all? Yeah, they were working on that this week.
Councilor White. Uh, what's happening with our wells? Uh, they're gonna, they're gonna, you need a specialized device to drill the holes different than a regular. Yeah, one. a dual rotary rig, okay. and uh, that is coming May 7th. May the 7th, it'll be here? Yeah. We'll start digging May 7th? Yeah, it'll go down, it'll drill the casing, and uh, get through the cobbles that the mud rotary couldn't get through, and it'll seal into that, and then they can install uh, the well casing inside of that, and then pull the drill casing out, and then uh, we have a tender for mechanization of the well, so installing the pumps, which we already have, the piping, the pitless adapter, and connecting into the wellhead. Everything's on, on goal there. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Council freezing. Uh, cutting down trees at the cemetery. Do you know what trees, what big trees are there? Yeah, there was uh, three ones that Mike had pointed out to me that were uh, dead or rotting on the inside. And uh, they were out over a number of... Um, could you bring it to his attention that around the columbarium, there's some trees there that have that big black... I don't know what it's even called, but Blackboard. it's on the branches themselves, yeah, and I, they're just going to rot the trees. So I'm thinking that they need to be trimmed off or cut or something. So it's like a black fungus. Yeah, and it's just around the columbarium. You can't miss it. Thank you. Councilor White. I know every year we seem to talk about this this time of year. As soon as those ice melts and the winds come from the east and they go over those lagoons, we're going to get this wonderful bouquet that I find very noxious. So we constantly, I have constantly talked about aeration, putting a bubbler in there similar that we use for our fish farms. I don't know that we've ever tried it. Yeah, so Derek has a, uh, is working on getting the lagoon, getting an RFP for design on that and uh, that will include aeration and then a sagger cell and changing it to uh, continuous discharge so that'll deal with the uh, capacity issues and uh, also it'll look at the berms at the same time because uh, they're getting quite old and every spring we have issues with capacity because we're right at free board or just mm -hmm. above before we get our discharge so when we do that switch over we'll be adding aeration then but you have aeration the, after that? Uh, aeration in the first cell and the sagger cell uh, will be where the secondary cell is right now, a it, portion of it. Is the aeration the belief that will make those anaerobic bacteria which produce, produce that smell, terrible smell, go away? It will change it to aerobic, so yeah. there will be some smell but it should be less because uh, once it flips over and becomes called facultative where it's aerobic on top and anaerobic uh, on the bottom. Once that happens, it still smells a bit, but not near as bad as when the ice first melts and it's totally anaerobic. Is that expensive? Uh, I, it'll be pretty expensive, the full project. Uh, to deal with the aeration is anytime you modify it, you have to go back and redo your license. And uh, so when you do that, you want to do it all at once. I keep hearing from the fish people that the, in the last three years the evolution of the aeration from large bubbles to really tiny, tiny bubbles with breaks of the water up even more is becoming so inexpensive to demand half a quarter of the, the electricity that they used to. The product is cheaper to buy and I'd appreciate if you could look into maybe from someone like Jeff Connolly or Holly Urban. Uh, the arm of uh, the town of Roblin is, they, they support the stuff big time. So I ask you to, because I keep hearing it's expensive, and, uh, and then the fish guys are saying, no, it's, it's not. So there's some contradiction there. Term, yes. Pardon? It's a relative term. Well, absolutely. Yes. So I don't know what that means, expensive. Yeah, it would and be in my house, I know what it means, but I'm not sure what, what you guys are saying that's expensive. Yeah, the sagger cell would be the more expensive part of it. Like installing the aeration, there would be a little mechanical building and some blowers. Uh, when Derek was talking to uh, Richard Zepic from AE, because we have quite a bit of elevation uh, difference at the back end, and they were looking at possibly generating uh, electricity off of that, uh, like running it through a stock and turning a generator, and then potentially we could get some new grants for that. Well, I appreciate it. 
if you look into that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilor Morio. Um, just looking at some other reports and stuff like that, um, the public works, um, the cover that's on that storm sewer or, or catch basin on 2nd Street South where the pylon is, can we have the, it's been there for a couple of weeks there now, can we have the guys, I know they're busy, but look at that and fix that up before yeah, Derek has talked to uh, the mechanics. They're going to go around and put little spot welds. Yeah, on exactly. Like basins. And it shouldn't take that long. It's been there like for three weeks now. And, uh, if we can get that tidied up and dealt with. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? If not, we have the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Morial. Resolve the Superintendent Works Report. We receive discussion. All in favor? Okay, we have a handy van report. Any questions on the handy van report? If not, the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle, resolve that the handy van report from March 2018 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay, we have the RCMP report for February and March. Any questions or comments? Uh, the Protective Services Committee is meeting with the RCMP tomorrow. Probably the committee should get together before then decide what points we're going to discuss with the RCMP. Julie. I have reached out to Darcy Fleury about the retro pay mm -hmm. that we're kind of expecting but don't know when it's coming and also about the new reporting system. Oh, but I was going to ask about that. So. Yeah, but I am still waiting to hear back from him, so if you don't mind, yeah. you know, talking At the to meeting, Councillor White and I went to Indoff and they talked about changing the reporting system. Mm -hmm. Councillor Sapp. Maybe just a couple of things. Uh, now that the weather's getting nicer out, we can maybe uh, let them know how we ex express our appreciation when they are walking the streets. I think that goes a long ways and it, and it keeps say maybe some people off the streets uh, you know I've been up and down Main Street numerous times and seem to see a lot of people that appear to be intoxicated and you know heaven forbid there's another accident or anything else that can happen in the community and just maybe make them aware of that you know I'm, I'm getting people telling me you know I see an intoxicated person's crossing the street and I, I know it creates more work for them but if these people are on the street and in that kind of shape there could be accidents and it's not safe for, for anybody but just to get you know maybe that foot traffic foot patrol would be nice to see again and, and we truly appreciate it I've heard in other jurisdiction it's almost a and I don't know if that's set out by the staff sergeant but almost like mandatory you know within a certain amount of hours every week they're they're actually walking high traffic areas and not just in their cars and being a little bit more visible RCMP yeah that's what I've been told in different areas Councillor White. Uh, I agree completely. And that also, uh, we keep talking about the computers. Someday they will show up computers in cars, which allows them to get out of their office. And if we had a, a full time staff sergeant, maybe that they'd have more time to make those things happen. Because we've been without, now, I'm going to say, two years, year and a half without that staff sergeant. And relative to your comment about being busy, I noticed in February they lodged 45. I guess we can call it prisoners or people were lodged in that one month, so that's more than one a day they're putting into uh, some sort of custody process. So they're, they've been kept busy. Any other questions, comments? So we have the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, resolve the RCMP report for February and March 2018 to receive discussion. All in favor? We have the motion moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Sacco. It's all that Mayor McKenzie be authorized to attend the Southern Chiefs Organization First Nation Municipalities Business Partnership Editions to reserve form held in Winnipeg May 8th and 9th. Discussion? All in favor?
Okay, you have the minutes of the management meeting. Any questions, Julie or Darren? I know it's Councillor White and then Councillor Morio. Uh, I was of the belief that we had ordered a second radar sign to be installed in our community. Uh, what's its status? Uh, Ken's working on it. I'll have to check. Is it uh, here? Yeah, it's in my office right now. Okay, so I'll have to check what the status <coughs> is because I know Thank he you. was talking to the guy. Councilor um, Moore. Um, last week, uh, the utility guys, operators, and Derek went down to Minnetonans uh, Bozeman to do their portion of the agreement and stuff like that. How did that go? Uh, they're going to they'll have to do a bit more training there. Uh, Derek's going to prepare a letter. Like They ended up going just before he took off, so he's going to prepare a letter for council on that. Uh, he just gave me a quick update, but I think the letter will kind of explain it better. It's a little bit of a different system than ours. Like it's reverse of, osmosis, isn't it? Exactly, yeah, instead of filter, and then it's a bit of an older system, so uh, I'll have a report or a letter for you guys to look at. Any other questions? Okay, reports. Councillor Friesen, how about you lead us off? Did I catch you off guard? Yeah, no. Um, <clears throat> I guess I just wanted to say how much I uh, enjoyed the seminar in Brandon. Um, the lady that did the, um, I forget her name, did the harassment. What was her name? I have it here. Here's your consequences. <clears throat> Barbara. I thought she was very good. There's a few things I didn't agree with that she said, but that's my problem. And then the other one was the age-friendly Manitoba. I know Dwayne's got to be in his bonnet. He's going to start being on our committee. That's a great idea. <laughs> we actually have, have passed a resolution two years ago. We are an age-friendly municipality. And um, I've been working with uh, Kay Markle at uh, Services to Seniors. And we have some things on the back burner that we're going to try and implement. One of them being uh, possibly applying for some grants to help all these storefronts have power doors. That's one of the things that I think we really, really need because it's not only good for seniors, it's good for moms with carriages, somebody carrying groceries, whatever. And not everybody has power doors. Everywhere we went in the city, I noticed, you just walk to the door and it opened, which is great. So um, I think that's all I have is, once again, thank you for the opportunity and uh, it'll be my swan song. Thank you. Councillor Staffel. Uh, I too attended the uh, municipal officials seminar. I always take a lot away from it. I think it's, I think it's a good thing for councils to go. I think in a lot of ways it's good to go as a group, and it's good because there's there's a lot of courses, and uh, I think we do a very good job as as far as we kind of split off because it's you'd never be able to do everything. So we have different different people going in different directions uh, to to make sure we take full benefit of it, but. We definitely, there's some things that are going on that, that I'm glad we don't have to contend with on our council. Is a lot of it's the flavor is kind of aimed for harassment, uh, civility, you know, basically bullying in, in the workplace. And you know, I have to I have to compliment our council. You know, like we, we definitely don't agree on everything, but at the end of the day, we we work together and we work together to better the community. So I I just like to thank everybody for for being that way and I guess and it's, it's it's a pleasure to work with everybody here because it's it makes it a, a great working environment this this like it's enjoyable um, other big things the uh, the uh, what was that one name? sorry a friendly Manitoba I took <laughs> actually quite a bit away from that and I might actually join your committee there it was it was quite interesting there was one statistic that sticks with me and he said, your, your population, you have more people in your population 65 and older than you do 15 and younger, and just because of the baby boomers, this is going to continue or if not grow for the next 20 years. So 
uh, it's something that we really have to strive hard as a community to to make our town more age friendly. A couple little uh, couple little things I've seen just at you know high traffic areas like say grocery stores. Um, you know they have uh, handicap parking and parking for mothers with babies for you know assistance, but they don't have actual senior parking. And I think that's something that maybe the committee can go look at it. You know some of our grocery stores to designate senior parking for for some of our seniors without having the handicap badge. You know there's there's people that it's nicer. They have a harder to carry groceries and things like that. Uh, another thing is we want to attract people to the community. So the more age friendly we are, uh, the better off we'll be as far as attracting some of these people. <coughs> some communities actually budget for age friendly initiatives. So something to look at uh, for the future budget. Um, yeah, so that's all I have on age friendly, but yeah, thanks everybody again for the trip and I think it was uh, very beneficial and learned a lot. Councillor Jacobson. All right, uh, I guess uh, for me, uh, we uh, started the uh, labor management, uh, started the process of uh, negotiating for our next collective agreement. We spent two days on that on April the 4th and the 5th. And uh, we're moving forward with that. We haven't got too far, but uh, we are moving ahead, and we'll see how that goes in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, April the 9th, we had our uh, emergency coordinator with a few of our department managers, managers get together to discuss emergency situations and uh, you know maybe prepare for potential uh, river flooding and so forth. But there's there's more to be learned. More yet to be learned about that as we go along. And, and actually on that, some of us I think got an email from Ken about a public information officer course that's I think provided or was offered by Dan Whitaker through the province, I believe it is. They're saying that potentially on June the 18th and 19th that this could be in Winnipeg, but they're maybe looking at possibility in Brandon or the Paw. It's something that I think I would be interested in going to when that time comes with, uh, uh, that when they set up the, the times and places. Um, this guy is just looking for interest. So if anybody got emails from Ken or from this uh, Dan, I think that Dwayne or Councillor White forward that on to everybody. If you're interested, you should probably respond to um, Mr. Lineker if you are slightly interested in, in it because I think that we can learn some. I know some of it has to do with dealing with the media and stuff like that, something that I had a chance to deal with uh, during the water crisis that might be beneficial you know, down the road, but uh, uh, anyways, we'll just watch for that. Uh, April the 11th, 12th, we were at the AMM Spring uh, meetings uh, in Brandon. Um, we heard some good speakers, uh, one of course speaking about ethics and professional at council and having a respectable workplace and every person's bill of rights and counselor cycle. I uh, mentioned that earlier and I totally agree with that and, and uh, it makes it easier for a person to come to a place that you know that you can work together regardless if you're not completely agreeing with one another you can leave the place and not hold any grudges and act professional. Uh, our first breakout session I went to, I think I was there with the mayor, and we uh, they discussed the cannabis policy. And this basically will cover uh, a lot of the unique challenges that municipal governments will deal with as uh, legalization comes forward this summer. And uh, something just for our administration will have to implement, you know, obviously some community regulations as well as providing safe uh, uh, places for for employees and, and for, for everybody else. Um, like I said, that management will have to set new cannabis and alcohol substance policies in the next few months. Okay, and Julie and will receive, sorry? I said, I'm glad you had a policy. <laughs> Julie will receive some assistance uh, from the AMM as well as uh, an organization, People First HR Services, if you're not aware of that, or if you are already. Um, of course, the second breakout session I attended was the civility at work. Uh, it was pretty interesting, and we've all kind of, I think, got a chance to see that. But it's indicated, it was interesting that they said that 80% of people don't like 
to go to work, especially if it's not in a civil environment. We can understand that and how difficult it can be and how much of an impact it does have on any organization, regardless if it's a, a municipal or, or if it's uh, in the private sector. Um, it's, uh, it can have some staggering results to any organization, and that including monetary, never mind the, the person that has to deal with that. Um, at the, uh, we also had a chance to go down to the, uh, uh, what they call it, the, uh, where all the vendors and all that are, the, the expo, and something for you and Derek is uh, an organization there called Western Asphalt. They gave me some uh, stuff there on resurfacing, not necessarily to, to mill a street, but just basically resurfacing or microsurfacing um, uh, existing uh, blacktop that we have in the community. Apparently it's, it's a lot less money than having to mill and, and fill. So it's something that I brought back for you guys, Darren, and, and you guys can look at that. And they are coming to Swan River. I know I don't think we have any projects this year, but something that maybe that you guys will have a chance to speak with these people when they come and, and visit. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, then we got a, also an upgrade or update on the health system and how we're going to see some changes. Obviously, some of them are very aggressive changes that are coming, but I think it's necessary, especially what they're trying to do to entice or improve uh, health care in, in rural uh, Manitoba. That was, uh, I'd like to hear that and, and, uh, and see where that goes. They, they have a lot of work ahead of them to make that successful. Um, another breakout session that I was able to attend was on the Highway Traffic Act, which is Bill 14, it's Transportation Modernization Act, and it included the dissolving of the Highway Board by the end of 2018. So this will mean basically for us a few things, but one of the biggest things is that we will have to, we will become our own traffic authority. Uh, for our streets, not highways and PTHs and stuff like that, but it will be uh, so our streets where we will set bylaws for speeds for our own streets in the municipality. And we will have to do this, they said, by in six months. So, uh, again, the, the legalization of cannabis is, uh, is, is coming, so we all heard that. Uh, when I got home, I had a chance to go to a district recreation meeting, uh, so I've been pretty busy. Um, of course, this has to do with the letter that the mayor sent to the committee about the surplus that's sitting in district recreation. And there, uh, we had a good representation from all the partners, uh, municipalities, as well as the uh, people that are um, uh, appointed at large. And there was uh, a discussion where the well, there was a discussion basically where the accumulated surplus actually came from, if it's government of natural municipalities or whatever. And at the end of the day, I said it's, 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 it's neither there, here or there as far as where it's coming from. But I think that, you know, like we, the elected people did have a, a long discussion about this, but it was interesting that when it was brought up that we should hear from the members, because the, the members are there uh, that have been appointed for them to bring forth their uh, comments and suggestions on, on the, from the grassroots, not necessarily from an elected point of view. So they brought their points forward and, and most of it had to, pretty much had to do with the programmer and the discussion about the programmer. So we will be getting a letter from the uh, district rec uh, uh, in regards to how they feel or what the dollars and the accumulated surplus and how it should be used. I'm, I'm guessing it's going to have to do with, uh, with the programmer. So I think that, that that's a discussion that um, our committee, rec committee, and with the rec manager, with Julie, are going to have to have a talk about as far as what does that mean and, and if that works and so on. Um, and then, of course, um, they said that if, if the dollars can't be used towards a programmer, their hopes is that it's used towards something new, not necessarily something that is in the budget that you could put towards the budget, but something new, you know, as far as for recreation purposes. So there's yet long discussion on that. That's not over, that's for sure. Um, Valley Stage Players, I was able to go to the fundraiser on uh, Friday night, which was really good. It's a good show, and they had the, the public uh, or the crowd there interacting so that was kind of neat and, and it was good on them like was mentioned earlier that they uh, 
they're doing a, a major fundraiser for sound equipment and for lighting, so good on that group. Of course, we talked about the Centennial Arena upgrade, so that's yet to be talked about. And then last night, I had a chance to go to Communities at Care meeting, and uh, I'm still learning a lot about them and, and, and what they do, but uh, I'm learning more that they do a, a lot of work, and it's not just this group here, it's also some of the educators that are involved with it. So um, there's some, uh, unfortunately, one of them was supposed to send me some stats because they, they do this life uh, skill training thing, and they learn what the results of if this program is done in the, in, in the community, as far as, say, grade fives, uh, sixes, and sevens, and what it does, and how it affects those individuals uh, in their lives now and then down the road as far as usage of certain substances and so on. And it, the statistics are quite interesting. So once I, I receive that, I'll, I'll share that with everybody else. So uh, more importantly, I guess they're talking more about expanding on mental health programs in the community. Um, and then everything else that we know about good guiding choices and triple P and, and so on. Um, I'm also supposed to report that they are having their AGM at the Albert Shark Crime Friendship Center on May 31st at 11 a.m. with uh, several presentations that will be done. That's it for me. I'm sorry for taking all your time. New, new record. <laughs> Good. Thank you very much for the extensive report and very thorough report, <laughs> Councillor Jacobson. Councillor Morio. Um, well, I won't be as long as uh, Councillor Jacobson, but it was also a busy uh, two weeks for myself. Uh, we kicked off this period with uh, a couple days of uh, bargaining with the, for the collective agreement that's coming forward. Um, that, um, we'll see how that goes and progresses as the negotiations progress. Um, we'll go from there. Um, we also had a meeting last Tuesday with the bylaw committee uh, where we were made aware um, of uh, some of the challenges that uh, as a result of our last bylaw changes that uh, is now presented to our building inspector um, with respect to the uh, elimination of the $5,000 for the non-structural non um, uh, changes made to buildings and stuff like that. So um, we'll be meeting next Monday again with the bylaw committee to see some of the changes and hopefully bring that back to the Council as a whole to explain the changes and what we inadvertently did by making some of those changes beyond what they were seeking to remedy in the first place. So, um, which we had sort of pointed out to the community where those decision papers are a really good thing where um, we stay within the boundaries or not stay in boundaries but stay within the parameters of what we're looking for and don't let uh, our minds go out and expand more than what. Uh, what was intended, and creating extra work and have to go back now and fix what we did. Okay. Um, last week, I also attended the Municipal, uh, municipal Official Seminar in Brandon. Uh, again, uh, a lot of the shared the same uh, seminars that we're at uh, on cannabis, uh, disability, and workplace were good ones. Uh, very informative session at the Shared Health Services uh, one by uh, Dr. Brock. Um, and also a, a very frank, entertaining uh, session at uh, the MIT with uh, changes um, with the elimination of the highway board or traffic board or kangaroo court, as one councillor called it. <laughs> um, and but it was uh, there were some very frank questions posed, and uh, it was very appreciative of the engineer that was there that gave uh, uh, an old BS answer. He was very frank in his um, responses to them and very honest. So. Uh, which I think uh, very, a lot of people if, may may have liked or not liked, but at least they appreciated the um, the non sugar coated reality answer that that they got. So um, it was also uh, a good opportunity to uh, take out the trade show uh, that was there by a lot of our suppliers that were there. Um, a lot of them recognized uh, the community and how much we uh, value doing business with us and stuff like that and. Uh, um, and we're, a lot of them took the opportunity to give us, like uh, Councilor Jacob soon, uh, handed out all kinds of stuff to attract uh, the business of, uh, for the town. So um, a lot of them were willing to work with us uh, and interested in gaining our business. So 
Um, and it also was a great opportunity um, for team building and networking with uh, not only our own counselors um, and council team that uh, went down there um, and where we did a lot of ribbing and civility exercises with each other and stuff like that, but uh, um, it was a good opportunity to network with a lot of other counselors out there um, and other councils um, to see um, how their organizations are working and things like that and compare notes. So. Um, and I also attended the uh, EMO exercise with the potential flooding ice jam scenario that we ran through uh, last week with our EMO coordinator to uh, do a dry run in the event that it does happen. So uh, it's good to be on the front end of that uh, instead of on the back end at 2 o'clock in the morning and trying to figure things out. Um, so that's basically all I have for the, uh, the stuff. But I also just want to bring forward that a couple of citizens have uh, brought forward to myself. And if we can nudge or pass on to our uh, bylaw officer, um, that if you could be a little bit more aggressive on uh, patrolling the town, uh, checking out for like the unsightly properties or unsecured garbage, um, realizing that now the snow is, is going away and a lot of garbage is being exposed, but there's a lot of... Uh, garbage that is flying around the community that as a result of unsecured garbage, um, not in bins and dogs or animals getting into garbage bags that are just left out on their properties and being blown around. So it's uh, um, it's not a very appealing sight, understanding that it's springtime and snow. Um, but also it was mentioned that uh, it needs to sort of hit up and monitor, especially over the lunch hours. Um, or on the back half of the lunch hours on the traffic patterns from the schools to the restaurants uh, where it appears to be a lot of uh, littering going on from the, the, the students going back to the schools tossing their uh, wrappers and pop bottles and what you have you uh, instead of finding appropriate um, garbage receptacles for it. So um, and maybe that's something where we have to look at is to see is uh, if those are Indeed, uh, in certain areas and stuff like that, is that we maybe we need to uh, take the initiative of putting out garbage receptacles and recycling containers where they can throw them in instead of just uh, throwing them on the ground. So and there were a couple there mm -hmm. along by the well center, but they walked a quick stop. There was a couple of receptacles mm -hmm. there. I don't know if they're still there. Yeah. So I, I know uh, back in the public work yard, there's a whole bunch of recycling ones there. We might have to put them out, but. Uh, uh, it was just a request as people are starting to clear up their yards and stuff like that. Uh, it was mentioned that the majority of the garbage that's in your yard is from upwind. And by going around, a lot of people have mentioned that there's a lot of starting to be unsightly properties in the community that uh, our bylaw officer needs to get a handle on before he gets out of control. So. Thank you, Councillor Morneau. Councillor White. April before we did our two days of negotiations. I think they're starting up nicely. I like the term family and it popped up often as the week evolved. April 6th we had the urban forest meetings and I want to compliment uh, Derek and his team for stepping up to volunteer. One of our priorities will be the uh, cleaning up of our uh, nursery to the south of us. And a new recruit Stephanie Reed from the Conservation District has just jumped up and volunteered for three or four projects already providing equipment and manpower, which is actually people power, whatever the word is. Then we did our EMO training uh, pre-flood. If that flood comes, I'm so happy we're doing it proactively. Uh, the municipal official seminar, I'll talk about that briefly, shortly. Then uh, the Swan Valley Coaches Alliance meeting uh, two nights ago, and they brought in the national uh, Olympian wheelchair coach, the gold medalist, to be the guest speaker. And he again talked about family. Now, family doesn't always have to agree, but they always should get along over the long run. So I appreciate his thoughts. And a big kudos to Patty for arranging the, the, the two days at clinics and all the activities that are taking place. It's, it's a big job making those things happen. Then uh, we had our airport commission meeting on the 16th, and we're uh, negotiating with a, a young businessman to perhaps offer crop spraying out of our community, so we're still, that's embryonic, but uh, it, it appears very positive. Uh, an announcement uh, close to the year this year to play basketball was our own Kevin Carter. What a compliment to Kevin for having that happen. I met with the uh, with Lada Graham at the hall. I think she says she's booked nearly every day for the next month. 
So her, the use of that hall has gone exponentially straight up. So when it comes time to negotiating with Lana, I think that should be kept in mind that she somehow has turned that around. I had a call from uh, our MLA, Mr. Wolchuk, and he is uh, concerned as we all are relative to traffic crossings. I know we have written letters as a council. He said, how can he help? And he's uh, more than willing to step up to help in that world also. I was talking to some people from Thompson. Their smelter appears to be closing down very soon. So I'm wondering if the RISE people might consider putting an ad in the uh, Thompson papers saying, hey, you guys might be looking for a place to stay. It might be a, a cheap investment uh, in getting people to move to our, to our community. And I really want to compliment Councillor uh, Jacobson for being proactive with keeping kids uh, off the ice, because that's going to be, it's, it's okay now, probably, but very soon it won't be. Of the four or five seminars I went to, it was uh, the do's and, doink, do's and doinks, that's a new word, do's and don'ts of employee misconduct. I said with the employees, it's good guys doing bad things, or he's a retired policeman with bad guys doing bad things. He says, so it's uh, the things that we have already, the code of conduct policy, how it has to be followed, modeling good behavior. Trust is not a control. He says, you have to know the employer, their issues at home, what's happening there. And do we have a checklist of our municipal property? Do we have a list of everything we own, Darren? Uh, it is on the website. Like, you're talking equipment or land? Equipment, tools, blah, blah. So if things go astray, there should be some sort of a mechanism we could look at. Yeah, like we have an equipment list that has okay. all the serial numbers. Well, I think all property, whatever property that somebody might want to steal. And I want to really compliment uh, yeah. Phil Friesen, Councillor Friesen, who is the chair of our age friendly community. And we had 10 out of 12 of the age friendly things that we need are here already. Absolutely. And I'm just saying, well, let's make it even a little better because the thing that jumped up with me and my private enterprise friends, these old guys over 65, of which I'm one of them, but I don't fit this next statement, they have a lot of cash. These older people are buying homes, buying furniture, buying properties. And they said, if you build it for the old people, the young people can use it. Build it for young people, old people can't. So that from that perspective, uh, there was a really big one. They said social networking is so important for the older community, it's older, important. It's a big determinant, determ de determinant in health and safety. If the old people have places to go where they can meet with their friends, sit on benches and talk, and they talk to predators on phone, predators on the internet now, and the, a lot of old guys and young guys fall to those rascals. Uh, inter inter intergenerational projects, big deal. The seniors need a reason to get up, There's some place to go, some activity to do. How much more age friendly can we become? An investment, not a cost. It's like all the things we build up, hopefully they become a, something that makes us money. Then he went to the public health uh, reorganization with uh, Dr. Brock Wright. Uh, he had some pretty uh, neat things to say and he talked about some thoughts about uh, professional medical recruitment. I had the privilege of meeting with him privately for about a half an hour after and uh, around pace. And he talked about, I think it was at that meeting, 30 million grams of cannabis is sold in the black market per year in Canada. Pretty scary number. 30 million grams. And so that was all in the PMH. Uh, I should just let you know that PMH is meeting uh, next week in Swan River. The whole board will be here, plus staff. If our council wants to have anything added or asked, I should be able to arrange to get that on there. And if they rest. Can the general public ask questions? I, it's not open, it's not an open public meeting. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's an interesting question to talk about. And uh, I went to the, where did we go? You and I went to the recycle place in the trade show by simply asking. We have 200 recycle bins coming to the Weldon Lake entity, for example. Now we could put them in our community property. I wouldn't put them outside to the school because they would to pick up and haul away, but they're, they're a nice product. So that kind of uh, device, recycle receptacles is available, are available. And it was simply asked, what's your name, phone number? Done. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, for me, pretty much everything's been covered. Council Moore, Council Moore and I went to uh, the Iron Mountain Council meeting to present some information on the proposal for the CT scanner. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, also, suggestion from uh, one of the people at Prairie Mountain Health that we also send our proposal to. Uh, it's called imaging. What is the 
familiar with the council more. Diagnostic. Diagnostic services, yes. So we will do that. Uh, I had the opportunity to attend the district, Parkland district meeting of the uh, Ladies Auxiliary of the Royal Canadian Legion. And uh, the, that organization is in real trouble uh, across the Parkland. Uh, there's probably only about four Ladies Auxiliaries left um, in places like Roblin and Dauphin and Grand Prix. Their Ladies Auxiliaries are folded. Uh, so I think with those places also, it's just a matter of time before their Legion branches will also close. There's just no veterans around anymore. Uh, people with connections to that. So that was sort of interesting. Uh, Julie and I also attended the Mayors and Reeves and CAOs part of the AMM convention. And the th part that took up the most time was uh, the part about, we used to call it the Department of Highways, Infrastructure, and Transportation. Their whole department is up for uh, suggestions for change. Nothing is off the table. So if Darren or any councillors have any have things with, with the highways department they think should be changed for the better, uh, now is the time to make those presentations. One thing I thought about, maybe highways on Main Street, instead of uh, uh, always plowing the, the snow to the curb, where their first plow could be to the center. Now is the time. Anything else with the Department of Highways, now is the time to bring it up, because everything is on the table. And again, the, the carbon tax was brought up at that particular meeting. Uh, the, and a lot of people spoke against the carbon tax, but uh, what was explained to them is either uh, we take the carbon tax as it's presented by the government of the day, or we have the federal government impose a carbon tax on it. So it's going to happen one day or the other. And that was all that I can recall that hadn't already been talked about. Would you let me do that? Mostly everything has been covered. Um, I just wanted to say that I went to the Valley Stage Players event on Saturday night and me and my family really enjoyed it. It was an excellent performance. Um, I do have an advertisement coming out in next week's paper for election candidate registrations, so watch for that. Um, we, we also set up on our website under the section uh, named Government um, and Elections tab so that we will put you know, any of our advertising or reforms or anything that we can put, put, put them on the website as well. I got the feeling with some of the lengthy reports that maybe some of the councillors are already in election. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a a request at the last council meeting for um, for a report on the status of the pool features. So just wanted to let you know that Patty's working on a report. Uh, we will be bringing that to the May 1st council meeting. And as I already mentioned, I contacted uh, Darcy Fleury of the RCMP uh, regarding the retro pay that we're unsure of when that's coming and how much it is and also uh, just some information on the new reporting system because it seems that we're still getting the same reports from our detachment right now. Um, and that's it. Okay. Thank you. Any last comment? I just wanted to comment on Tasty Ace. You talk about the Legion. That has been just like a real shot in the arm for them down there. They're making lots of money and they've got projects lined up like a new roof and Things like that. So good on the people for going and supporting that because uh, it's really, you know, a good thing. And congrats to the guy from Flinflon who won in the pot. <laughs> okay, we'll continue on. Councilor Um I was just thinking here as we talked about the RCMP, if maybe Council uh, could have our mayor write a letter to D Division or whatever. Um, expressing our concerns with the lack of having a staff sergeant here for the last two years that uh, um, we may not be being charged for it but uh, if we are or are not um, but uh, the lack of that extra body and the direction is, in my opinion has definitely been felt and seen in the community um, I agree. with the lack of now the foot patrols all that stuff as Councilor Sackle mentioned and things like that so that and, and things like that so 
And again, uh, like even on Main Street, uh, high rate of speed of cars that are actually coming down there, even though it's posted at 60, there's still cars going away. So um, I don't know if it's the workloader in that detachment or whatever, but uh, um, I think we need, we need to send a letter to the division to uh, express our concerns that uh, the lack of a, a permanent staff sergeant there is. Okay, I can draft the letter. Continue on with resolutions, bylaws. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that bylaw 2, 2018, being a bylaw of the Town of Swan River to authorize the expenditure and borrowing of money for the installation of curb and gutter and asphalt pavement in the 300 block of 12th Avenue South, the 12 and 1300 blocks of 13th Avenue South, as a local improvement be read a second time. Discussion. Council saw the decision from the municipal board to opposition, but uh, the municipal board will not hold a hearing, so we're free to move forward with our with our bylaws. All in favor of the resolution? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Sack, will resolve that bylaw 2, 2018, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to authorize the expenditure and borrowing of money for the installation of curb gutter and asphalt pavement at the 300 block of 12th Avenue South and the 12 and 1300 block of 3rd Street South as a local improvement be read a third time and be passed. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Sackle. Resolve the council as follows: We hereby approve for payment general accounts from check 22242 to 22332 for a total of 261,156.85. Payroll accounts from check 4196 to 4202 for a total of 107,262.01. And payroll accounts from check 4203 to 4207 for a total of 16,672.49. Discussion? Councillor Sackle. I've got a couple, three here that I just, uh, Terry didn't uh, read our minds this week, but triple two five six uh, to high track for six ninety seven forty five triple two seventy two okay tire for nineteen eighty and then two two three oh three valley water and septic for nineteen oh six. So high track would be uh, the case backhoe. I'll have to find out exactly what it was. Isn't that thing relatively new? Uh, it's five years old. Okay. Uh, or four and a half. Uh, okay, tire, I'd have to check what that one was. And uh, valley water, that was when we had a bunch of freeze ups happening simultaneously. So we had our uh, back truck working on storms for. Uh, residential sewers and then 6th at north froze up the storm sewer and so it was starting to back up into the catch basins in town and so they thawed from the outlet to the storm interceptor and then started going up from that and then the next day we finished it off with our truck once it was freed up. No offense but I was sold on the idea of having our own back truck we wouldn't need some of these other expenses that's all I, that's why it's a question mm -hmm. yeah it was just the timing where it was all happening at once any other questions councillor Moore. <coughs> uh check number triple two five nine to ken catton enterprise c-a-t-t-o-n never heard of that individual group before mm -hmm. I know I deal with them, they sell fasteners and all kinds of bolts and other things, but it would be nice to know what they were buying, I guess. Yeah, I can uh, look that up and get back to you. 
Any other questions? Councillor Jacobson. Just more of a uh, comment I'd like to see here is the, uh, the payroll checks uh, information. If you all have a look at that, uh, you really get a grasp at the cost of payroll and the true cost and everything else. So I appreciate that this has been added to this and uh, for everybody to, to see this. As an employer, I, 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 I know exactly what this is all about. But not everybody does understand what the true cost of, of being an employer truly is. Thank you. And that was our financial officer's idea to start adding that information. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> All in favor of the resolution? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Sacco, resolved the town purchase a half ton base model truck from former motors in the amount of 29800 plus taxes. Be it further resolved that transfer from the machinery reserve fund be made to cover the cost of this purchase. Discussion? Councillor White. Uh, there is a truck that we use at the pool, and uh, I go down there three or four times a day, and I'm sure everybody's working really hard, but that truck sits there. Maybe it's got a million miles on us right sitting there, but I don't know. So if that truck appears, I could be absolutely wrong, to not being used that often, why wouldn't we slide it out of there and use it in this instance here? Uh, so that's Brendan's truck for the pool, and uh, so when he's at the pool, he doesn't have to uh, drive around, so that's why you see it sitting there. But when he does need parts or anything, then that's when he would use it. So he just needs access to a vehicle if he has to get parts or if he has to get supplies from the arena or anything like that. Uh, whereas public works, we need the vehicles for our guys. So the issue would be we would be working on something with that truck and then Brendan needs parts. And so he has to wait or our guys have to drive over to give him the truck and stop what they're doing. Can we pay him mileage to use his car? I don't know if he has to be putting stuff in his car. He needs the box yeah. for supplies. We can't, so we can't, we don't have enough trucks that we can slide with, but they're being used all the time is what I'm hearing. Except yeah, that one. In the summer, well, that one sits there, but it's when he needs it, he needs it kind of thing. So if he didn't have the truck, then we'd have to pull someone off of a job to go get something for him. Could we buy a, a cheaper or smaller multi-purpose truck that you're running around that, as opposed to the big half ton which you need for your, own, your main and stuff? I have to check with Patty on her size requirements. Just a thought. Councillor Moore. Uh, the tender results, is that that's on you or a used truck? Uh, that would be on new. Any other discussion? Do we not get quotes from? I think yeah, we have three there, there, there. There's uh, uh, from the Farmall Key and Red Line. Okay, sorry. All in favor of the resolution? Opposed? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, resolve the Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2017, be received. Uh, discussion, any questions from Council? One count question you've had posed to Councillor Jacobson is about the, uh, the contract or the agreement that the Foundation made with uh, primary health care clinics. So the deal was for the first five years, there was a sliding fee dependent on the number of doctors and professional people were occupied uh, there. So there's a, a budget amount there of $14,000 was paid in the last year. That does not come out of the taxpayer's money. That money comes from the donations that people have put into the foundation for uh, health care. So, so, so if it's full this year, then that will be nothing, that will be zero. And what do they uh, consider full? I think nine. Be 
Any other questions? All in favor of the resolution? by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, will all the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District meeting minutes for January, February, and March be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that pursuant to section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council will go into committee and close the meeting to the public. All in favor? Thank you. 